Did you ever wonder about that tree that Adam and Eve ate? The Bible calls it the tree of knowledge or the tree of good and evil. Well, in the Bible, it actually speaks of three different trees. And today we're going to be diving into the three trees that are in the Bible. Today we're going to be speaking about the three trees that are in the Bible. I know you've heard of some of them, but maybe you haven't categorized them in the correct way. But before we get into that, if you find this video a blessing to you, consider sharing with friends, with family. It's probably a blessing to you. It's most likely going to be a blessing to someone else. And like and follow wherever you're following us from. All right, back into the topic at hand. Today we're going to be talking about the three trees in the Bible. And I know you've heard, everyone has heard about the, the tree of knowledge. The Bible also calls it the, the tree of good and evil. And I'm going to read to you several verses. In Genesis 2, 8, it starts to speak about that first tree, that tree of of good and evil but wait there's another tree there's actually two trees that were planted inside of the garden of eden two trees and right now we're going to read both of them in genesis 2 8 it says the lord planted a garden eastward of eden and there he put a man who he had formed he put adam in there and out of the ground the lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we pause here to see that we actually have two trees that are there at the center of the garden. We have this, the tree of life and we also have the tree of good and evil. Now fast forward just a little bit. God tells Adam, he tells them, do not eat of the tree of good and evil. He says, because the day that you will eat that day, you will die. He never tells Adam not to eat of the book of, uh, of, of the tree of life. He never tells them, don't eat of the tree of life. He just tells them not to eat of the tree of good and evil. Now, what does Adam do? He obeys God, but when Eve comes into play we all know the story that Eve was tempted by the snake and we could go into a whole lesson on that on why was Eve even next to the tree and in my point of view is because she didn't receive this instruction directly from God himself and maybe Adam wasn't that explicit or, or forceful in saying hey we really have to obey God in this area I don't know what reason Eve had. We could dive more into that later. But she was there and she was tricked into eating the fruits. As you know, she didn't die right away. Actually, she just kept living and she said, oh, everything's fine. So she goes and gives it to Adam and Adam eats of the fruit as well. As you know, God curses the serpent. He also gives some punishment to man and to woman. But he specifically wants to take out man and woman out of the Garden of Eden. And here we're reading in Genesis 3.22. And it says, And the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. Now he knows the good and evil. And now he's going to put his hand. And he can also take of the tree of life. And eat and live forever. So this gives us an insight a little bit more of the tree of life. Remember, the tree, there was two different trees. The tree of good and evil was the one that he ate of. And now Adam and Eve were aware of the evils and the things that sin came into their hearts because of this disobedience. Now God was saying if, if they eat out of the tree of life, they will forever live in sin. And that's why he had to make a drastic move here, a decision to kick Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. So the Lord says, he says, Therefore the Lord God sent forth the Garden of Eden to the ground whence they were taken. So he drove out man and he placed at the east of the garden a cherubims with a flaming sword which turned in each way to keep them from the way of the tree of life. God took them out because he wanted to protect the tree of life, not the tree of knowledge because they had already eaten from it. He was protecting them from eating from the tree of life. 
So this tree of life actually comes up different times in the Bible. In Psalms, it comes up different times. And in different parts of the Bible, there's prophets that reference the tree of life as something good, as something that we are going to have. So we go into the second, that second tree, into the tree of life. And I want to read to you in Revelation 22. Because in Revelation 22, it actually tells us a little bit even more of the, of the tree of life. It says like this, verse 1. And he showed me, and this is uh, the, the Apostle John speaking about the things that he saw in heaven. He said, he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of river, and there was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. What this gives us a picture of is John seeing the tree of life, which had twelve different types of fruits. Every month they would have a different type of fruit, bearing different kind of uh, fruits for us to eat or for people to eat, for someone to eat. And the leaves, there were some kind of medicine, it seemed, because it says, for the healing of nations. And this is where he saw the tree of life, right in the middle of the street, right next to the throne of God himself. This is an amazing picture of where the tree of life is going to be. It's just an amazing thing. Now remember, the tree of knowledge is a different tree. By the way, side note, I know a lot of people say that Adam ate a, a, an apple and that that's the fruit that he ate of, but we actually don't know. The Bible doesn't say what the tree of knowledge, what kind of fruit it had. Uh, people, Different people theorize of what it could be or what it could not be. Uh, but we just don't know. I could go down the rabbit hole on that, but we just don't know. The Bible doesn't say. And even here in the in the tree of life, it actually doesn't say either, but it does say that it has 12 different types of fruits, which is just amazing, amazing. Now, in all of this, in all of this, I want to I want to read to you Revelation 2, 7, because this tree of life is for you and for me. And here I'm going to read to you here. And it says, He who have a hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So this tree is for us to eat. It is our recompense, our ultimate goal well, to be close to God, but the way that we're going to be close to God and live forever is because He's going to give us of this tree of life. He is the tree. He is the water. He is all of that, but He is going to physically, there's a physical place, this tree that, remember, at this moment is still in the Garden of Eden that is protected by cherubims, but at some point, it's going to be, or it already is, right in the paradise of God. This is what Revelation is telling us about. So that's two trees right there. That's the, the tree of knowledge, which we failed. Adam failed, but we failed as well. We disobeyed God. And then we have the tree of life. That's our goal. That's our end points. That's where we want to go. In between that, God also speaks to us about another tree. And I know you've heard it before. And it's the cross. The cross is that third tree that bridges both of those trees. Jesus was crucified on the cross. And for that, I'll take you to Philippians 7, uh, 2, 7. It says, but it made himself no reputation, taking from him as a bondservant and becoming the likeness of man. God became a man himself. Being found as an appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. And the death of the cross. This cross was in historical times used by the Romans. It was just a tree. A tree that they would cut off. They would put two trees, two branches together. Uh, uh, the long one and the, and the cross section one. And they had different iterations of this. I know we always represent the one that's like this. And most likely it was the one that was straight and, and like that. But the, the Romans had different iterations of that. But it was always a type of tree. And they would put 
the people who they wanted to kill for political reasons, for uh, stealing, for for criminality, whatever reason that they had, they would put people, or just to prove a point, they would just kill people just to prove a point. And the Romans were brutal and crucified people. And this was all over historical dom- documents that we have. Now the Bible is the best historical document because there is no lie to it. And they crucified Jesus on a cross into a tree. And this is just mind-blowing to me because how God uses these three trees, the first one, where it was supposed to be maybe something good, but it came the good and evil, and especially the disobedience of man. But he was able to bridge that to the tree of life with his own tree, with the cross. And he was able to bridge that so we would ultimately be able to, to partake of that tree of life. And that is what today's thought is, what today's biblical principle that I that I felt like sharing today is those three trees. We have those three trees already right now with us. We have the good and evil. And as you know, even today, we know the good, we know the evil, we know we have even more knowledge. It says that the knowledge would multiply. And today knowledge is multiplying at a rapid, rapid pace. But we have the cross to redeem us. So one day we will all take part of that tree of life. That is just absolutely amazing for us to have those three trees to participate in this history that God led before us, put before us, and that we're able to journey through this and one day be in that paradise of God and be able to take part of that tree of life. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for being here. Uh, You guys are amazing. I'm always grateful for all the good reception for this. Keep following because we're going to have great topics, more great topics. If you have another great topic that you would want to hear about or Bible question, feel free to leave it in the comments and we'll get back to it and we'll make sure that we answer all these different types of questions that are out there that sometimes we're not able to get to all the time. But through these videos, I'm very, very happy that we're able to do that. I hope that you guys like the new studio. It's looking good. And soon we'll do a grand opening and we'll open more and more. If you want to come in and even do like a little interview, a little testimony, that is a great thing also that we can do here. And we're hoping that people hear your testimony just as well they hear somebody else's because by the testimony, we are redeemed. We grow in faith. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. And always remember those three trees, especially, especially the cross.